Ugh. See, it doesn't help when you're sweaty underneath already, and the wire just kind of, like, drags. Mm, it's an uncomfortable feeling. It's not, well, it's uncomfortable for the wire for anyone else who had... Oh, we're, well, hey, we're rolling. Oh, we're Hello, rolling. everybody. Welcome back to uh, After Hours. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, we're closed, so uh, see you tomorrow. Just kidding. Thanks for drinking with us. Yeah. I'm Tim. Jonathan, I got a real special uh, pour today. This one is very interesting because it has a zero sugar, but like as soon as you put it into the right glass, it becomes, wow. That's that's amazing. Don't let me know how that tastes. On today's top shelf topic, we're gonna be talking about how many X's we can fit in one episode. I have none. So far you have two. Oh. <laughs> you can see who's the branding and who's the marketing. <laughs> you usually do. I know. Well, I'm not wearing a hat. It's sweaty. And I'm not oh. taking off my shirt because really we're strictly professional here. <laughs> Cheers. Sweet. Oh, that's good. Well, let's dig in. Today's, uh, today's topic. Jonathan, would you care to share? Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it was, that's been really strong stuff. <laughs> you all right? Yeah, I was still getting over the X's. Oh, <laughs> it's still, still laughing. Today we're talking about growth. Um, let's go ahead and start with the definition. What does Webster say? What does Webster say is the definition of the, the term growth? Yeah, so I actually looked up uh, two definitions. One is on the actual definition of growth itself, which is the process of increasing in physical size. Of course. The other is actual business growth, uh, and that's the stage where business reaches the point for expansion and seeks additional options to generate more profit. So that wait, that's actually in Webster? No, that was a Google search. Close enough. Google's official. Yeah, Google. Google's legit, man. That's where I find everything. Yeah, just Google it. When in doubt, Google. Okay, so we're talking about it. It, it primarily talks about physical growth which I guess you could actually put in terms for businesses. Oh, absolutely. Because you li like you literally and you physically expand either with the, the your staff or your building or your products, whatever. Um, but why income. why is growth, huh? Income. Yeah, everything can really be, be measured with an increase of, you know, with the growth. But why is growth important? Like, should that be a goal? We talked about goals our last episode. Um, so would it be a wise thing to have growth in general, I guess, as a as a goal, or why is it important? I think it's important even if it's not just a goal. I mean, if if you're not growing your company, then I mean, it's it's technically not doing anything. And if anything, it's likely going to start dying because that means that you're not out in the marketplace. You're not out trying to promote yourself. Um, so I mean, if you just stay the same, let's just say you stay the same, everything else is actually increasing in price over time anyway. That's, so yeah. no matter what, if you just look at it like that. It's like, yeah, if you're, if you, if you're static, you die because everything's constantly evolving, moving forward. So what, how do you explain the businesses like the mom and pop stores where nothing changes, they've, they've remained the same for like 20 so years and they're not planning to change to grow because they're just who they are. How do you explain that they're still around? <laughs> I think that they're probably just comfortable. They work, I think, uh, you see a lot of them working tons of hours. You don't see them really bringing on new staff. Um, nothing really ever changes. So, I mean, I guess it's technically possible, but... Right. So, it's, I mean, it's, it's they, they kind of settle it's for... It's not a not, model that I would want to go by. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, if, if there's no growth or intent to grow with your business, then it's like you're not, you can't expect that with income if you're not trying anything different or wanting to, to change things. And even if it's not income for you, maybe it's time. I mean, it's yeah. hard to get more time if you stay the same because you're going to always have to be working the same hours. You know, if you can't bring out new staff, say it is, you know, I mean, we're still a smaller company, but say it is a mom and pop, say it's just one or two people, like you have to be there all the time. Yeah. And I'm not saying as you grow, you still don't have to be around, but without growth, I mean, like, you have to have your doors unlocked, and you're there answering the phone, you're there taking the emails, the walk-ins. So you need that growth to be able to just give yourself more personal life, more income. Well, I would even argue if you're making a full life investment in a business, 
you're kind of choking yourself to where you can't grow because you are so consumed with all the responsibilities you put on yourself. Like being there for like 40 plus hours or whatever, or, or, or having responsibilities of taking care of this, this, and that, and the other thing. How can you grow if you physically cannot do any more? You know, which is why it's, it's better to have uh, Les Brown said, uh, you could, it's, your energy brings you to a certain level, which is why it's necessary to bring other people with the other positive energy to go to the next level. So everyone's hat has their limits. So I'm, if, I'm guessing if you want to grow past those limits, it's, it's good to have people to surround yourself with people that have that same vision. Yeah. And I mean, if you want to grow your company, you got to put in perspective, you like, you're basically saying you're not good at everything. Yeah. It's so you like need stretching to find, yourself thin. You need to know how to do everything, but when you can find people that can do things better than you, that's when you can start to grow. Another quote I'm going to shoot out. Bruce Lee said, I'm not afraid of the man who knows a thousand kicks. I'm afraid of the man who's learned one kick a thousand times. You want a lot of those people on your team? It, well, he's basically saying it doesn't matter how many skills you possess. It's like it's the person who hones in on that one skill that, that like masters it. That's the one who's going to you know do some damage. Uh, so for a person to stretch yourself thin, they're not going to make much of an impact. Yeah. That's why it's important to just know your strengths. And I guess that could be another topic of like, is it important to understand weaknesses or should we just focus on strengths, you know? That'll be next one. That'll be our next one. Starting XDM, going on... Express Digital Media. Six months? Yeah. We're coming on our sixth month. Yeah. So how do you define growth? Like, what do you see as growth for Express Digital Media? Like, where you want to be? What... What do you want to see happen to consider growth? Mm, that's a really good question. I, I would, what I like to see it as now is kind of an assessment period of knowing where the bases are, to know what kind of clients we're working with, what kind of traffic we're dealing with, what kind of, like, what are our products that we have right now that we are, uh, like, that we're really good at, you know? Instead of just trying to find new things, like, are we, are we already set? Like, do we have good editing? Do we have good photography? Do we have good videography? Or do we have good enough equipment? Um, instead of just starting to put out products that you're not really fully behind, like, I know a little bit about this, so I'll offer it. Um, so right now, I feel like that's kind of an, it's, it's more of an, an experimental stage to kind of know the strengths, know the weaknesses, and just uh, building a solid base before just, you know, skyrocketing <laughs> so if you're considering uh the next phases what, what would be the next growth phase for you like mm. what type of person would you want to bring on or equipment yeah. like what is it you look at would be the next phase that you need to be able to grow express social media that's that's difficult to say because this is kind of this is new for me it's new for me so kind I think of it's a good perspective it is it is a good perspective uh it's new for me so um i mean yeah you're this is you, you know you're old hat to all this i mean you know You've been through this all, <laughs> you know? It's a pretty new head, actually. I knew he was gonna say something. I think for me right now, it's difficult to kind of uh, kind of manage my own turf because I've always, I've always worked for somebody and that's what I've kind of been accustomed to. So for having to run my own show is, is different because I know what I'm capable of. I know exactly, be like, oh yeah, we can do this. Oh yeah, we can do that, no problem. So bringing on new people is a whole different playing field of like, okay, I, I have no idea what this person's capable of or incapable of if I can trust them, if they're able to maintain quality, if they're going to make it worse. Like, there's just lots of variables. Especially that... when you get into sending people out in the field. Yeah. They're going to be dealing with your client. Yeah, like if I need somebody to, to do videography at an event, I have to know that they know how to run the camera, how to get the shots, how to work with the client, because if they mess that up, I got nothing to work with. So it is scary <laughs> to have to trust other people to, you know, follow that same vision. Because a lot of people around here, especially younger, are just doing it for a paycheck, which is understandable. But it's like for people like you and me, we're, we're, we have a big goal, you know, a big okay. vision to follow. And uh, if people don't share that vision, we're just on our own. Because uh, it's very rare for a person to have a passion and a drive. Because if they have a drive and a passion, they're not going to be looking for other jobs like, like what you and I have. So When you're thinking about wanting to grow your company and things like that, I think some of the first things that you do need to hone in on is sort of like you actually said earlier is one making sure you don't spread yourself too thin too quickly trying to do too many things too burning well. yourself out yeah yeah i mean like we're at the stage now i'm always experimenting with things um and i've always i have always tried to push new things but i've only done it once i sort of solidified the next thing that i had learned hmm. And, but while I'm like finishing up learning that next thing and getting pretty good at it, I start to explore like what else can I add next. But I've always tried to do it to where I'm not trying to do too many things at one time. 
um, I guess most recently doing the apparel, doing the social media and all that stuff. Yeah. In a sense, I'm starting many new things, but I have like you controlling it and I have Anthony controlling it. So it's not just me like it used to be. Like So when you're starting off small, like you definitely got to be more aware right. of not trying to do way too many things at one time. You have that breathing space and breathing room to allow other people to kind of you know, submerse themselves in the responsibilities so you don't have to. Yeah, and I think that's one of the one one of the great reasons that you should try to grow is because it's getting to the opportunity now that I can start up new branches. Yeah. Actually bring somebody in to run it. Yeah. And we can start to not thin ourselves out, but we're growing but with new new product lines and things like that. Um, and I think another thing that you should definitely do that I wish I had done sooner is definitely look at first what are the things that you don't necessarily need to do that won't hurt the company if you don't do and try to bring people in to help do that first mm. to save you time so you can focus on the more important things for the company. Yeah, that, that is, uh, it's difficult to try and figure out like what you need to focus on, either solidifying what you currently have or learning new because you know, diverting that focus is definitely going to lack in the other thing. Like if you're trying to, you know, work on what you have right now, you're not going to catch up on the new things. If you only focus on the new things, you're not going to be grounded in anything. Uh, one thing that I always visualize is like a church. Uh, it's it's if they have to focus on bringing in new people or educating the current people, and they can't do both because it's very different teaching methods. Yeah. So it's like. What is a church supposed to do? Because they're responsible for the growth of their congregation. It's difficult for business, too, to figure out where should that focus be? Because you can't do it with both. Yeah. I mean, if you're a business out there, small or big, like, what do you define as growth? I guess it really comes down to the managers because, I mean, they have the final say. It's like, uh, what, what business or what managing tactic do you guys put focus on? If you're a business manager and uh, a person in control of departments, um, what difficulties have you guys encountered? Please let us know so we can talk about it. We want to know other perspectives. What are some of the difficulties that you're having trying to grow Express Digital Media? Hmm. Well, it, for me personally, it's, it's, it's exploring new territory, and part of that is like sales. Uh, I've never really had to... You don't like to sell. It's not that I don't like to, it's, I'm, I'm familiar with it. And I feel like with it, I, 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 there are some people who just love things they don't know, <laughs> but for me, um, it's a it's an uncomfortable sort of situation because it is the unknown. I don't know, you know, how to say something without ruining something or, or pitching something just right. Getting to read a person, getting to know your products very well. I mean, there's a lot to it for me. Um, but that's one thing that I'm 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 learning, um, and I feel like I'm definitely going to be growing and getting better at it because it is something I need to be doing. I need to do. So that's currently what the the one thing I think I'm struggling with. It's just the unknown. You're getting it. I'm not afraid of the unknown because just, it's just it's, afraid to talk to people. Not on the phone. In person it's fine. I'm not a phone guy. He's not a phone guy. It's just like there's always an unknown number that's popping up. I'm like, I'm not answering, I don't know you. And if a person like I have to pick up a call, it's like I still don't know you because I, I can't see your face. <laughs> it's uncomfortable. Me with the company growth areas that we're having, you know, struggle is really getting, we, we've brought on so many people, you know, we have three designers versus one now, you know, have more people doing production in the back. Um, it's almost like everybody's always sort of running into each other and yet at the same time, everybody thinks somebody else is doing something. So they, they sort of pass it off thinking, oh, this person's handling, this person thinks this yeah. person's handling it's it. the assumptions. So right now we're trying to build these controls and it's taking a lot of time of, of trying to really get everybody on the same page um, to make sure that things don't get missed, that we are getting things done. Yeah, I mean, managing a motley crew is, is difficult because everyone's coming from different backgrounds. They all have different perspectives. They all have different reasons why they're the there first working. I've ever heard that. What? I was thinking of the group. Motley crew. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, and I think that it can cause definitely a little bit of issues with with clients. I mean, unfortunately, in our growth phase, for example, right now, we're going through a pretty decent growth phase, but it, it definitely, I feel like we're able to recapture with our clients when something goes wrong. But we definitely have issues throughout the week. And yeah. it, it is, it's just a growing thing. And it's something that... Growing pains. Yeah. I mean, I'm not happy with them, but... 
you got to get through them to sort of figure out what you got to fix. That's a that's a really that's really interesting like really interesting thought because biz even businesses go through growing pains. That about wraps it up for us here at uh, After Hours. Uh, I'm Tim. I'm Jonathan. And uh, thanks for drinking with us. Thank you. It's empty. I'm done. Mine is empty. <laughs> Sorry, it's, it's it's the beer. It's the beer, man. Hey, in after hours, there's got to be some belching. Otherwise, it's not no, drinking. not me. <laughs> no, not me. <laughs> the connoisseur of drinks. Whatever this is. Because I'm drinking from a bottle, isn't it? <laughs> Think you're better than me? 